Hey guys, how's it going today? Today what I'm going to do is a reboot of my an old video I did a few years ago where uh, it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted to. It was just an example like this one is. This is just an example. So what I'm going to do here is thread the end of this barrel for uh, it could be a suppressor, a silencer, whatever, or a muzzle brake. And in this case, I'm just going to put a thread protector on there. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is dial our barrel in. And I'm not going to talk about that here because that can be a lengthy process in and of itself. But the goal is to dial your barrel in as close to zero as humanly possible. So what I have here is a PTG uh, range rod with a bushing that fits the bore. Uh, and it's tight in there so it doesn't wiggle or wobble around out, out on the end out here. And this is a one half of one thousandths indicator. So I already dialed this guy in, and as you can see, it doesn't move. And let's crank it over to the outside end here. And I might have to reposition my camera, but hopefully we'll get it to work here. So again, we spin it. In there too. Doesn't move. So that tells us that our uh, barrel is perfectly lined up to within, you know, one or two ten thousandths of an inch uh, based off that indicator there. So that's the first step. I was going to mention too, this is a buck chuck. This is an adjustable three jaw chuck. So uh, you may not have these, you can use a four jaw chuck, but this is. Uh, you can adjust this, the chuck itself on the back plate, and then you tighten it down. And then this is a number four uh, copper wire. I believe it's a number four. Uh, and that just gives it a pivot point. Instead of having brass shims all the way across here, that'll flatten the barrel out, and that'll basically clamp your barrel in. So when you're adjusting your barrel on the outside, it has a tendency to bend it. So you tend to use a smaller pivot point here, which is just a, a malleable piece of copper. Uh, and that usually holds pretty tight tight enough for this guy here so next step what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm going to face the front of this guy off because we're gonna completely redo this uh, muzzle here so we can just get rid of it So now what we can do is run our tailstock up in there with a brass muzzle protector. Alright, here is a brass uh, muzzle protector basically. All it is is it goes inside the bore and it keeps the, uh, this hardened live center from damaging the bore. So that just simply fits on there. And you may ask, well why am I doing this? And the reason is, I got you know a little bit sticking out there. Not a big deal, but in doing any type of uh, gunsmith work or any type of lathe work, rigidity is king, so this just makes it more rigid. This is going to be a 700 thousandths inch long thread, and to mark it off first hand, I'm going to use a sharpie. And the reason for this is you just want to get a rough idea. This isn't the final depth, this is just uh, getting you close because when you are actually cutting out to a shoulder um, and I don't have a DRO so I can't just you know that makes life ten times easier so I'm just gonna go out to about 650 and you can use some I have some die cam I could use that but I don't want to get that on the other side of the barrel here so yes I'm gonna use a magic marker that'll get us close and then we'll come back later and we'll uh, cut this to our final depth. We also need to know how much we need to take off of this guy so I'm going to put a 1 half by 28 uh, thread protector on here which is a pretty standard for a smaller caliber. So we gotta see what our depth is for our uh, diameter is starting out with and it's just a rough uh, 665 
So we got to take 155 thousandths off approximately our major diameter. We got to get down to uh, 0.497, give or take three thousandths. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna try to hit 497 right on the nuts. All right, another thing I wanted to show quick is this is a Remington barrel, and usually Remingtons are the outside diameters are pretty nasty. So um, I'm just gonna show here quick. I might take a skim coat here just to zero this thing out, and we'll see how close uh, we get or how concentric the outside of this thing is. They're usually not very. Zero that out first. I'm gonna back up just a tad here. Take a few random skim cuts. So you can kind of see, that's why you don't indicate on the outside of your barrel. See it's cutting there, not cutting there, at least a few thousands out. So I'll just take a quick skim pass on here and uh, start cutting away. Mark my marker line here so I can see it. Then I'm going to double check with my calipers. Make sure I don't go too far. Zero it out. Not that it's a big deal at this point, but there we go. So even if I cut my marker line completely off, I'm still good there. So. And double check that I actually did make a 60 thousandths cut just for the hell of it. So five thousand fifty five, so ninety five. See, that was 60,000, so I'm at 595 right now. Five fifteen. so we'll do another 15. Five oh two, just a hair under five hundred. So that should be perfecto. Let me double check this guy. <clears throat> All right. Next step in the process is we're gonna cut our shoulder length to depth. We have a nice flat crown here, and the very edge of this is gonna be pretty much what the crown is gonna be. I'll put a new crown on there, but uh, this will be pretty close. So right now it's at six. 42, so we gotta go another 58 thousandths. To go to my depth, uh, I don't have one of them fancy DROs or one of them brand new fancy lathes, but, uh, my, well my lathe here is pretty much brand new, it's all rebuilt, but, um, so what we're gonna do is I got a micrometer stop here, and these are actually pretty dang spot on, surprisingly. So I'm going to crank in. Actually, we're going to do 45. What did I say? 50? 50, 58 or something like that? 50. I can't remember what I said exactly, but it was over 50. So I'll just crank in right at 50. I think it was uh, 642, I think I said. So 58,000. So we'll just do 50 for now. We'll uh, do that, remeasure it, and then we'll uh, work our way up to it. Okay, so that's the end. And then we're going to make sure my cross slide here is zeroed out. I'm gonna back out, cut the edge of it there. Remeasure our depth and we'll see how close we are. If you had a DRO, of course, like I said, this would be 10 times easier. So 
I'm five, six, seven thousandths under. So the purpose of all this is to get this as accurate as possible. All right, dead nut 700. So call that good. Next step. All right, next step is we're gonna do, well, it depends on what part of the country you're from. Some people call it a back cut, some people call it an undercut. Technically, I guess it's an undercut. Some people if, consider you a hillbilly if you call it a back cut, so depending on your uh, state of mind, I guess, that may be a compliment, but I'm not from down south, so I don't know. Anyways, so what we're gonna do now, back cut, and ideally you want as, uh, small of a blade as possible. I think I have a 3 16 cutoff tool here. I have a smaller one, but I'm cutting into the shoulder like most normal people do, so we're just going to cut this down to 450 thousandths, which is the minor diameter of the thread. Alright, I slowed my lathe down to a mystery number where it likes to cut parting cuts with a parting tool, or a parting bit as some people may call it. So let's plunge in 50 thou here. I'm also going to make that same cut over here. I'm only going to go in a few thousands, maybe ten thousands, and uh, I'm going to put a little relief on the end of here. Here we are. Now we're ready to cut some threads. Alright, here we go. This is just a scratch pass just to test our threads out, make sure everything's correct. So we can cut away. All right, so now we're going to do our final cut here. Cutting oil, a little special cutting oil. Well, first off, let's double check. I already checked this, but just to show you guys. Nice tight fit, doesn't move, doesn't wobble at all. And that'll be okay if we're recessed a little bit, because there actually is a 45 degree uh, lip on that protector there, so that'll be okay. So it's just about the perfect length. See, it's smooth, nice and smooth on there. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is crown this guy. All I'm going to do is a little recessed target crown. Uh, it's nothing spectacular. i got a super sharp little bit here. And we're going to just put a little, I'm going to put a little 30 degree taper in here because that's what my compound's set at so it doesn't really matter. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna clean that off and I'll take it off and I'll take a look at this thing. All right, there we go. Let's see if I can, pretty clean threads. I guess you couldn't ask for much better than that. Um, they turned out pretty good, I'm happy with them. And see, so we got our little relief cut here in the front. So let us, that'll leave us room <clears throat> so our threads don't go all the way up to the end of the muzzle. All right, so here's the crown. It's not my typical mirror finish with my cutter bit, but it uh, it's very concentric and it turned out all right. It's better than most I've seen. Uh, the only thing is I usually like to go over one super light pass over this and then it turns it into a mirror, sh uh, mirror shine on the crown. Anyways, we got a little recess here. 
this is a 30 degree, it doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of guys do 45, but it doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. And then just flat on the outside, and then our recess. So this will give us a good crown for the gases exiting the barrel. And again, in my opinion, once it gets out to here, I don't think it really matters much as far as uh, gases flying back. And let's put this guy on there, get it lined up here. See it ever so nicely threads on there. So here you can see this uh, threading job is now within specs at 700 thousandths deep from the crown of the muzzle, the very outside of the crown here. And just for, you know, if it makes you sleep better at night, the flat part of this crown butts up right against this 45 on the shoulder. So your gas will blow out here and then they'll blow out further. If you wanted to be super anal about this, you could cut this at a 45 degree angle. Mine's at a 30. But then this would blow out typically right past there and it'd, it'd work out all right. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could either cut your shoulder back a little bit, which you probably don't want to do, but you could also cut this uh, thread protector back just a little bit to make this flush with your outside of your crown here. Uh, I think this is just fine. Again, this is just an example, although uh, the barrel's still good, so if somebody wanted to use it, they certainly could. And I don't do this professionally. I used to, but I don't anymore. So this video is just kind of a reboot of my first video I did a couple years ago hastily, very hastily, on an old crappy worn out lathe. Uh, and I get a lot of guys uh, complaining about it, saying, oh my god, that's the worst thing I've ever seen, this and that, whatever else. And it's like, yeah, I get it. I spent like five minutes making that video, and it was kind of a crash course, and I didn't take my time on it. That was a junk barrel, so yeah, if you want to see how it's really done, that's how I normally do them. Nice and smooth threads, cut to specs. And I did measure these with uh, thread wires too. And they're right at the bottom edge of the pitch diameter. And also this thread protector fits on there perfectly. So this thing would be good to go if they wanted to put a suppressor on it. These threads are perfectly aligned with the bore to within a few ten thousandths of an inch. I'm comfortable saying a few ten thousands because you never know. Uh, you can dial it in, but when you're working on it, sometimes things do move around. So, uh, but I'm pretty comfortable saying within a couple ten thousands. So that's more than accurate enough to run a silencer or a muzzle brake. If you wanted to put a muzzle brake on here, it would be as simple as uh, screwing it on. If you wanted to fit a custom one on there, you'd screw it on and time it if you needed to time it. Uh, otherwise, you just screw it on. And the shoulder back here is perfectly flat, so when this thread protector or muzzle brake or whatever does butt up against it, it's nice tight fit and you cannot fit anything in there. There is no gap there. So this is the way I normally, I used to do them, like I said, I don't do them much anymore, but this is just a reboot of video numero uno, uh, which ended up being a way more popular than I thought it would ever get. I hope this helped you guys out. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to comment below and check out a bunch of my other videos on similar topics like this. And if you'd like to help make more videos like this, check out my Patreon channel. Every little bit helps. So till next time, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.